Okay, in our video series on infectious medicine, in this video, we'll be talking about lung abscess. In previous video, we talked about pneumonia treatment. In this video, we are going to talk about the presentation and causes of lung abscess. We'll discuss that how do you treat it. First of all, what is lung abscess? Lung abscess is basically a localized collection of pus and necrotic tissue within the lung parenchyma caused by a microbial infection. Infection by microbes cause destruction of the lung parenchyma, destruction of the lung tissue and resulting in the formation of localized pus. This is a picture showing lung abscess. Lung abscess can be classified into two types, either it is primary or secondary. Primary lung abscess is the one that occurs due to aspiration. And in 80% of the cases, the aspiration is cause of lung abscess. Aspiration usually occurs in patients who are either comatose or stroke patients who have weak gag reflex, who cannot protect their airways. And the oropharyngeal bacteria get inside the lungs and reside over there, proliferates over there, resulting in formation of necrotic abscess, pus formation and abscess formation. So 80% of the cases of lung abscess occur due to aspiration and remember the oropharyngeal bacteria is mostly anaerobic bacteria, peptostreptococcus. Bacteroides, Fusobacterium, these anaerobic bacteria get inside the lungs during aspiration and they cause lung abscess formation. Secondary abscess are comparatively rare and secondary abscess can occur due to lung neoplasm, any cancer in the lungs. The cancer in the lungs causes obstruction of the bronchioles and bronchi resulting in the infection because whenever there is an obstruction of a pathway, behind that obstruction there is always formation of infection, there is always proliferation of bacteria resulting in abscess formation. So lung neoplasm can result in abscess formation. Hematogenous spread of bacteria can also cause lung abscess. In IV drug users, Staph aureus can enter the blood and it can reside in the lungs resulting in the formation of lung abscess. And remember, abscess due to aspiration will be mostly unilateral and it will be on the right side. And abscess due to hematogenous spread will be multifocal and it will be bilateral. Other than that, streptococcus pneumonia infection, pneumonia can later on result in lung abscess formation and haemophilus influenza infection can also result in lung abscess formation in children specifically who are unvaccinated. And remember that after a viral infection, after a viral influenza, Staph aureus is a cause of secondary pneumonia and that secondary pneumonia can result in lung abscess formation. I have talked about pneumonia in detail in my video on pneumonia treatment and management. You can check out the link in the description below. So it was all about the primary and secondary lung abscess. Coming to the clinical presentation of lung abscess. Lung abscess, if it is less than six weeks, it is called as acute. If it is for more than six weeks, that is called as chronic. Remember, it's an abscess, it's an infection. It will present with spiking fever. Patient will be having spiking fevers. And with that, patient will be having productive cough, purulent, foul, smelly sputum. A purulent, foul, smelly sputum is an indication that that patient is having anaerobic bacteria infection and mostly due to aspiration. Night sweats due to abscess, pleuritic chest pain and weight loss and anorexia. This is the presentation of lung abscess. If the patient is paralyzed, if the patient is in coma, if the patient has stroke, if the patient has weak gag reflex, there are chances that that patient will develop aspiration. Depending upon the position in which that patient is sitting or patient is lying down, the lung lobes are affected. Usually, aspiration involves the right side of the lungs much more than the left side. Aspiration pneumonia is unilateral and most commonly involves the right side. And if the patient is in prone position or upright position, right middle lobe is most commonly affected. And if the patient is in recumbent position, in that position, posterior segment of the upper lobe or superior segment of the lower lobe is most commonly affected. Coming to the diagnosis of lung abscess. In the diagnosis of lung abscess, chest x-ray is the best initial test. Chest x-ray is the first test that you would order. In chest x-ray, what you would see is that you would see an air fluid level.
an air fluid level will be visible this is the fluid and this is the air so this there is an air fluid level showing an abscess pus filled cavity ct scan is the gold standard test for the diagnosis of lung abscess ct scan is the most important gold standard test for the diagnosis on ct scan you would see a picture like this these are the abscesses this is another picture showing the lung abscess on a ct scan other than that you also obtain sputum cultures you gram stain the sputum and you look for the microorganisms so that you can give appropriate antibiotic therapy coming to the management of lung abscess if a patient presents to you with lung abscess you need to admit the patient you need to obtain the sample for cultures and you need to start empiric antibiotic therapy remember lung abscess is one of the abscesses in the body that can be easily treated with antibiotic therapy if the abscess is not very large and if the abscess is not very complicated antibiotic therapy is usually enough for the treatment of lung abscess whenever you are about to start empiric antibiotic therapy for lung abscess you need to see whether there are any risk factors for mrsa or not if the patient had any hospital exposure and patient was exposed to resistant forms of mrsa that patient has suspected mrsa infection different antibiotics stronger antibiotics are used if the patient has no risk factors for mrsa you can use clindamycin clindamycin is the most important drug for the treatment of lung abscess clindamycin kills the anaerobic bacteria that is that are causing lung abscess due to aspiration clindamycin 600 mg iv every 8 hourly is given ampicillin sulbectam 3 g iv every 6 hourly can be given ceftriaxone 1 g iv od with metronidazole 1 g iv bd metronidazole once again a drug that kills anaerobic bacteria moxifloxacin 400 mg iv per orally od if the patient is having suspected mrsa infection in that patient you have to use stronger antibiotics stronger antibiotics like lenazolid 600 mg iv bd vancomycin 15 to 20 mg per kg in mrsa infection methicillin resistant staph aureus vancomycin is a very effective drug and even better than vancomycin is lenazolid usually lung abscess do not require any interventional therapy lung abscess is one of the abscesses in the body that can be treated with antibiotic therapy but if the lung abscess is greater than 6 to 8 cm in size this usually do not fully respond to the antibiotic therapy in that case you need to go for interventional therapy or if the patient is having significant hemoptysis which indicate that patient is having severe lung damage resulting in damage of the blood vessel rupturing of the blood vessels and hemoptysis if the patient is having inadequate response to your antibiotic therapy and there is persistent lung abscess in that patient you need to go for interventional therapy first line in the interventional therapy is bronchoscopic drainage or image guided percutaneous drainage of the abscess and the last line is that even if everything has failed and the lung abscess has spread lung abscess is huge then you need to cut the lobe lobectomy is done and in some cases the whole lung is taken out pneumonectomy removal of the whole lung is done now if the patient comes to you with lung abscess this is the checklist that you should follow in the management first of all you confirm the diagnosis on imaging chest x ray ct scan you send the cultures of sputum you start empiric antibiotic therapy you evaluate for invasive treatment whether the patient needs invasive management or not and you treat for the underlying cause the complications of lung abscess include pleural empyema pus formation in the pleural cavity pleural effusion bronchopulmonary fistula bronchopulmonary fistula is an opening between the lungs and the pleural cavity that's one of the most dangerous complications of lung abscess if it's left untreated and pneumothorax in summary we talked about what is lung abscess we talked about the primary lung abscess due to aspiration mostly due to anaerobic bacteria secondary lung abscess due to lung neoplasm due to hematogenous spread we talked about the clinical features for the diagnosis you do chest x ray ct scan admit the patient obtain cultures start empiric antibiotic therapy empiric antibiotic therapy based on the presence of risk factors of mrsa and interventional therapy if the abscess is very large significant hemoptysis 
and interventional therapy includes bronchoscopic drainage surgical resection. The checklist for the management of lung abscess and complications of lung abscess. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine and infectious medicine. Also check out my video on pneumonia in which I have talked about pneumonia in detail. You can check out the link of those videos in the description. Thank you very much.